Ah, okay. Uh, shall I start now? Yes, sir. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Chairman, for the kind introduction. Uh, at the outset, uh, I would like to thank uh, the organizers uh, for uh, giving me the opportunity to talk uh, on uh, uh, the challenges in trivalent actinide partitioning from high level liquid waste and some possible solutions which we have encountered in our laboratory. So I am uh, K. Vakreshan from uh, Reprocessing Research and Development Division, uh, Reprocessing Group of Indira Gandhi Center for Atomic Research. I am going to share uh, some of the activities which we have carried out in our center. The spent nuclear fuel is reprocessed for the recovery of uh, uranium and plutonium from the uh, spent nuclear fuel. So initially it is dissolved in nitric acid medium and then it is contacted with the uh, 1.1 molar TBB dodecane for the separation of uranium and plutonium. In advanced pure process cycles, the neutronium uh, is also rooted along with the uranium and plutonium so that uh, the problems associated with the neptunium in the high level liquid waste is minimized. When this uh, uranium and plutonium recovered uh, from reprocessing, it is recycled back for uh, uh, back as a fuel for future reactors. Uh, back as already rejected after the extraction of uranium and plutonium is known as high level liquid waste and which contains minor actinides. Uh, fission products, corrosion products, etc. So let's see. Uh, they were uh, there was a. Uh, uh, it, it has been suggested uh, to immobilize this hydraulic waste uh, in uh, yeah, suitable matrices like uh, glass and uh, matrices, and matrices, and dispose it in deep geological repositories. This was uh, previously adopted, but as of now, so this has been under uh, the public uh, actance because uh, of uh, the radio toxicity associated with these minor actinides and fission products. The bottom uh, plot shows uh, the radio toxicity, relative radio toxicity as a function of years, and the bottom line shows the natural uranium level background, which is shown as the red line. If we are not going to reprocess the uh, spent nuclear fuel, uh, the radio toxicity associated with the unreprocessed uh, spent nuclear fuel requires a very long billions of years uh, to come back to the background levels. On the other hand, if we are going to separate uh, this uh, uh, trivalent actinides, which are present uh, in the um, uh, high level liquid waste, and then transmute it uh, uh, to transmute it uh, in, in uh, advanced uh, uh, accelerated driven systems and fast reactors, then the radio toxicity associated with uh, minor actinides is negligible. And then we need to take care of uh, the, uh, the remaining waste, which is containing cesium and strontium approximately for uh, 300 years. So even if we can separate this cesium and strontium for uh, uh, medical applications, then uh, there is a possibility that we will not have the problem associated with the high level liquid waste uh, may not exist uh, because uh, the radio toxicity associated with the remaining uh, waste after the separation of cesium strontium and minor actinides will be negligible. So as of now, the uh, Partitioning and transmutation strategy has been suggested as one of the safest methods for one of the safest methods. Hello. Yes. Yeah. video. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I have, it is on, video is on. Switch off the video. Switch off the video. Yeah. Yes, it's okay, sir. Uh, now we can see? Yeah, yeah. All right. It is good. Yeah. Now can I speak? Hello? Yes, sir. You can go ahead, sir. Ah, yeah, yeah. So, so partitioning and transportation has been suggested as uh, the 
uh, best method for the safe disposal of high level liquid waste. Nowadays, uh, the, uh, the high level liquid waste problem is viewed in a different uh, way that uh, because of the presence of uh, platinum group metals. Yesterday also, uh, we have seen uh, one of the speaker was talking about the separation of uh, ruthenium for medical applications. In addition to that, we also have uh, the heat generators such as uh, cesium and strontium. The next talk, uh, Dr. Nami is also going to give you uh, separation of uh, strontium from high level liquid waste. And, uh, and uh, because of this, uh, there is a uh, different uh, dimension is taking place and high level liquid waste is no longer regarded as the waste because of the presence of this platinum group metals and heat generating nucleates such as cesium and strontium. After the separation of minor actinides, platinum group metals, as well as the heat generating nucleates, the remaining elements uh, can be very easily uh, disposed uh, as uh, waste in a shallow land burial, uh, burial also. It doesn't require a deep geological repositories. So if you look at the composition of high level liquid waste, which I have shown here, the essence is shown on the right side. One can see that uh, the PHWR uh, fuel, uh, which is reached a burn up of 6,500 megawatt day per ton, uh, has the lanthanide content of 1.7 kilograms, whereas the FBR, uh, which is having a lanthanide content of around 10 kgs. So this is because, uh, however, the concentration of lanthanides uh, and uh, uh, americium present in high level liquid waste are small. This is because of the dilution which uh, is used for uh, dissolving this fuel. And uh, this PHWR uh, uh, fuel, it is dissolved. Sir, your sound is not coming. Please. Please. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, tri uh, trivalent actinides from high-level liquid waste, and uh, and uh, since uh, it is also uh, containing this lanthanides as well as the lithium. Hello. Since it also contains so lanthanides and yttrium. So Pardon, your audio is not clear. Sir, your sound is getting cut in between. Is it clear now? Hello? It's okay. Audio sir. is clear? Yes. It's, yes. it's okay, sir. Okay, yeah. And now the challenging uh, problem is how are we going to separate uh, this actinides from high level liquid waste in the presence of uh, this um, lanthanides and yttrium? Now the spent nuclear fuel is dissolved in nitric acid medium and can see that uh, most of the elements like cesium first group and second group as well as transient metal uh, products, uh, uh, most of the fission products, they remain in uh, the uh, native oxidation state. That is CS plus, SR2 plus and the other things remain in the same oxidation state. For the sake of simplicity, I have given for uh, uh, actinides and lanthanides, how do they exist uh, in 3 to 4 molar nitric acid medium? So uranium, it is essentially existing in all forms. Essentially, it is existing in the form of neutral complexes in 3 to 4 molar nitric acid medium. So whereas plutonium, it exists in all kinds of forms, which uh, is uh, I have shown uh, here right from plutonium 4 plus to various nitrate complexes up to anionic form. Whereas in the case of americium, so it exists essentially as americium 3 plus americium nitrate. Uh, the, uh, the abundance of the neutral ammonia, um, americium nitrate as well as curium nitrate is very small. And this, it, this is similar to the case of lanthanides. Therefore, when uh, this uh, uh, dissolver solution is contacted with uh, this TVP, uranium and plutonium, since it is a neutral ligand, TVP is a neutral ligand, only uranium and plutonium is getting extracted into the organic phase. Uh, for uh, separating americium from 3 to 4 molar nitric acid medium, we require advanced ligands, especially a bidentate or tridentate ligands are needed for the separation of uh, americium and lanthanides from high-level liquid waste. 
So one of the promising ligand which has been uh, invented by Sasaki in uh, uh, about 20 years back is the diglycolamides, which I have shown here, the uh, tetraoctyl diglycolamide, which is regarded as one of the promising ligand for the separation of uh, actinides and lanthanides uh, from high level liquid base. Now, since it is a neutral ligand it, and uh, the chemistry of americium lanthanides are quite similar, uh, uh, they both of the uh, both of the metal they get extracted into organic phase. The, the problem is how are we going to separate these lanthanides and actinides? Because uh, transmutation of actinides requires uh, the separation of lanthanides because uh, the lanthanides are regarded as neutron poisons, which reduces uh, the efficacy of uh, actinide transmutation. Therefore, lanthanide and actinides. Uh, group as well as a non-polar alkyl chain. It can be regarded as a micelli. One can see that it has got a polar head with the tail alkyl chain length as the non-polar uh, ligand, uh, non-polar alkyl chain. So this uh, um, ligand is usually dissolved in endodecane for solid extraction applications. The endo, it is dissolved in endodecane because of the, it, we wanted to have a low viscosity, high flash point, low density, fast disengagement, and, a dis, and it should dissolve good amount of extractant. At the same time, it should not form that phase, and it should also exhibit good stability uh, in uh, solvating the extracted complex, which is formed in the organic phase. But uh, what happens uh, when we dissolve this uh, diglycolamides in uh, organic phase, uh, in endodecane phase, is that they undergo reverse micellar aggregation, which I have shown here. The polar group is at the center. At the periphery, we have a non-polar alkyl chain. So uh, this uh, kind of aggregation is uh, not uh, good for solid extraction application because this can lead to the third phase formation. Any factor that increases the polar-polar interaction favors the aggregation, whereas uh, uh, any factor that increases the Van der Waals interaction between the alkyl chain and in, uh, with uh, the endodecane that uh, in increases the dispersion or uh, uh, that prevents uh, the aggregation. Now let us see how the aggregation uh, leading to third phase formation. So one can see that uh, when this organic phase uh, uh, is contacted with uh, nitric acid solution containing americium and lanthanides. Uh, this uh, uh, diglycolamide extracts this americium and lanthanides into the organic phase. Uh, depending upon the amount of uh, the lanthanides and nitric acid, actinides extracted, water content extracted into the organic phase, uh, the size of the reverse micellar aggregation it differs. Uh, so here, a wide range of uh, reverse micellar or uh, reverse micelles uh, are formed uh, into a group of different sizes and, uh, and uh, depending upon the amount of metal, nitric acid and water, which is loaded into the organic phase, the size of the reverse micelle is quite different. So after some time, uh, as the loading is increasing, after some time what happens is uh, the uh, the, you know, the polar polar interaction among the reverse micelles are so strong that uh, they disengage from the endodecane phase and appears as a different different phase. Uh, as I have shown here, at a, uh, this happens at a particular uh, uh, loading of uh, metal ion, uh, which is known as limiting uh, organic phase concentration, uh, at which uh, the organic phase undergoes splitting into two phases. So this is happening at a particular size, which is known as critical aggregate size. Uh, uh, critical aggregate size. Uh, it is the average aggregate size at which uh, uh, the um, the organic phase undergoes splitting. So such a kind of splitting is an undesirable event in the industrial scale solid extraction procedure. So um, what is
Dr. Bhinkateshan, you are not audible at the moment. Dr. Bhinkateshan, you are not audible at the moment, please. Bhinkateshan, sir, kindly check your sound system. We are not able to hear in organic phase increases. Okay. Increases which in amount of nitric acid extracted into organic phase increases with increase in the concentration of nitric acid in aqueous phase. So after some time, what happens is when the, the organic phase is contacted with Hello. Hello, am I audible? Sir, you are oh, yeah. sir, last slide you are not audible. If you can start from your last slide again. This slide? No, the last one. Previous one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Is this slide? Shall I start from this slide? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So here uh, I am showing that uh, depending upon the uh, the amount of uh, nitric acid, amount of americium and lanthanide extracted into organic phase, the the the, uh, the size of the reverse micellar, uh, uh, reverse micellars, which is present in the organic phase, is quite different. Uh, as the uh, as the loading of uh, this metal in nitric acid increases. Uh, the size is increasing and uh, because of the strongly polar nature of uh, the uh, extracted complex, uh, so the reverse micellar concentration is increasing and after some, uh, after at a particular uh, reverse micellar aggregate size, the organic phase split into two phases. So, so it is therefore it is desirable to avoid uh, the third phase formation uh, and uh, because uh, uh, the third phase formation is an undesirable event in the industrial scale solvent extraction procedure um, because it causes flooding during the counter current run and then uh, we also have uh, we also have problems associated with uh, the uh, fissile content presence of fissile content in the third phase so Therefore, it is desirable to avoid third phase formation. And to understand how to avoid the third phase formation, uh, it is necessary to probe the insights of third phase formation. So this is can be done. This can be done very easily by the dynamic light scattering method, which I am going to discuss now. So this is the extraction of nitric acid in organic phase containing Thedga, 0.2 molar thedga in endodecane. And uh, one can see that uh, the amount of nitric acid which is extracted into organic phase, it increases with increase in the concentration of nitric acid. So at 4 molar nitric acid, when the organic phase was equilibrated with 4 molar nitric acid, the organic phase splitting into two phases. To understand uh, uh, the aggregation behavior in organic phase, the uh, organic phase obtained after extraction is subjected to dynamic light scattering studies and the dynamic light scattering distribution, which is shown here. So one can see that uh, uh, this is the aggregate uh, distribution, which is happening when we dissolve 0.2 molar terga in endodecane, it undergoes self-aggregation and uh, approximately uh, 2 nanometer size is formed in the organic phase. So when the nitric acid, uh, when it is contacted with nitric acid, the aggregate size further increases when this 0.2 molar terga in endodecane is contacted with nitric acid and subjected to dynamic light scattering studies, the intensity is increased to this level. One can see that uh, it has, uh, the intensity is also increasing. It means that concentration of reverse micellar is increasing. At the same time, uh, the size is also increasing. One can see that uh, it is uh, average aggregate size is coming near uh, 4 nanometer. When it is contacted with 2 molar and 3 molar nitric acid, say it further increases. When it is contacted with 4 molar nitric acid, one can see that the third phase is formed. The third phase at the bottom figure, one can see that 
the third phase, uh, the size is approximately uh, 20, 30 nanometer, uh, that, uh, that phase uh, size. And uh, the diluent rich phase, that is the topmost of uh, the three phasic system, is known as the diluent rich phase, which shows uh, the very small concentration of the aggregates. And this third phase can be very easily dissolved by adding uh, water to the organic uh, to the triphasic system after addition of water at a particular point uh, what happens is the uh, the triphasic system again becomes a uh, biphasic system and then this organic phase after becoming biphasic system uh, the organic phase was subjected to dynamic light scattering and the results are shown here one can see that the average aggregate size is approximately 22 nanometer. So this is known as the limiting aggregate size for that phase formation and beyond which it is uh, this organic system is going to form a that phase. Now, how to control the that phase formation? So there are uh, in literature, there are several reports are available for controlling the that phase formation. One can, we can do the structural modification of the extractant itself by but the structural modification of the extractant uh, itself uh, one can do and uh, prevent the that phase formation or, or one can also add uh, phase modifiers for uh, for controlling the that phase formation so in the phase modifiers addition of phase modifiers we have in literature three kinds of uh, Three kind of external modifiers have been added. One is uh, neutral ligand modifiers, and another one is alcohol-based modifiers and acidic extractant-based modifiers. In the case of uh, neutral ligand-based modifiers, we have two categories. One is uh, uh, the purex extractants. They were added as phase modifiers. And in fact, uh, uh, when the that phase was formed in CMPO systems, which was uh, uh, in use in the 80s, TBP was immediately proposed because TBP and DHOA were considered as purex solvents, uh, which is used for the extraction of uranium and plutonium. When this uh, purex solvents were contact with nitric acid, uh, high level liquid base, it was not forming that phase. Therefore, at that time, it was suggested that uh, TBP or DHOA can be added uh, to uh, the to the truex solvents. Uh, to prevent the third phase formation. So it is not necessary that we need to add only the purex solvents. One can also add the truex solvents, which I am going to show the results uh, which, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, the advantages of adding uh, truex solvents, which I am going to discuss with you now, adding some infusions. Another way of uh, preventing the third phase formation is uh, by adding alcohols as phase modifiers. But uh, I'm not sure why alcohol and alcohol chosen as modifiers. Uh, because uh, it is well known fact that alcohol, when it is contacted with the nitric acid, it uh, gives explosive reaction. And it is not clear why alcohols have been suggested as phase modifiers. So fortunately, in this modifier, particular alcohol, octanol and decanol, one can have very long alkyl chain line. Therefore, we are not seeing as of now the, any explosive reactions in the presence of alcohol. But uh, we uh, we have to know that uh, uh, this uh, um, high active waste uh, uh, after uh, the separation of um, this americium as well as lanthanides, it is going to be concentrated by thermosiphon evaporators wherein we are going to concentrate this high low liquid waste and heat it to uh, around uh, um, 120, 110 to 120 degree for uh, concentrating um, 120 high low liquid waste. Under such conditions, the alcohol trapped in aqueous phase is quite likely to react with uh, to react, um, with nitric acid and could cause an explosive reaction. Therefore, it is to avoid alcohol uh, as phase modifiers and say no to alcohol for the no processing applications. Another uh, kind of uh, extractant is to add acidic modifiers, which we have found that acidic modifiers are giving uh, a lot of promise in the sense that uh, irritates the uh, synergistic extraction of uh, the extraction actinide. At the same time, it also prevents the that phase formation 
and it also facilitates uh, the single cycle separation that is similar to ice annex process single cycle separation of actinides uh, from the high level liquid base and today i am going to discuss about how we are going to uh, modify the structure as well as uh, neutral ligand modifiers how they are going to uh, prevent the third phase formation now let us consider first neutral ligands as first modifiers. So neutral ligands suggested in literature were TVP and DHOA and uh, along with the TEGA or TODGA. So we along with TEGA, I am shown on the left side that uh, uh, this is the extraction isotherm of nitric acid. This is the, you can see that TEGA when it is extracted um, with the uh, contacted with nitric acid, it undergoes th third phase formation when it is contacted with formular nitric acid. Solution. On the other hand, since the polarity of uh, this uh, DHOA is much lower as compared to TEGA, it can sustain for more nitric acid concentration and about uh, when it is contacted is much lower, uh, more than 10 molar nitric acid, it can, it results in the third phase formation. On the other hand, this uh, TBP molecule is least polar among these three compounds. Therefore, it can still extract a much higher amount of nitric acid without uh, leading to that phase formation. And that uh, after contacting uh, TBP with uh, concentrated nitric acid only, it results in the that phase formation. So this can be very easily uh, studied by dynamic light scattering studies. The bottom most light scattering studies shows the bottom more, bottom most curve shows uh, uh, the the dynamic light scattering data of the dynamic uh, molecule when it is contacted with uh, one molar, two molar, and three molar nitric acid. When it is contacted with four molar nitric acid, it is going to form that phase. This I have not shown here in this plot. Whereas in the case of DHOA, uh, whereas in the case it is contacted with the nitric acid more than eight molar, it is going to form that phase. Therefore, up to eight molar, which is showing the last, uh, which is shown in the last curve, so it doesn't form in that phase. Similarly, in the case of uh, TBP molecule, which is phase of least polar. So up to 12 molar also, the size of uh, the dynamic, the size of uh, uh, the, uh, the aggregates which is formed in TBP is very, very small. So this is the comparison at the three molar nitric acid. The shaded region indicates uh, that after equilibrating with the three molar nitric acid, the sizes are very small for TBP as compared to DHOA. Uh, and in the case of TEDGA, since it is strongly polar ligand, so it results in a very huge aggregate size. So therefore, TBP can, is the best candidate uh, as compared to DHOA. So it is one of the best candidate for uh, maneuvering this third phase formation. So at the bottom curve, one can see that this is the third phase Without, uh, when it is contacted with formula nitric acid and uh, mm, and when TBP is added to the extent of uh, 0 0.8, uh, 0.2 molar TBP, uh, the size one can see that it is much below the critical size uh, for third phase formation. So therefore, it, it, uh, the third phase formation in such system was avoided. Similarly, when it is concentration of TBP similarly increased, then uh, what is happening is uh, uh, the size of the aggregates which is formed in uh, organic phase is very, very small. This indicates that whatever the added TBP is useful for protonation. Instead of the, the nitric acid, when it is extracted into organic phase, instead of protonating to take the molecule, which leads to that phase formation, instead of that, TBP is taking care of the protonation. So, so the understanding is we should not, uh, we should have to, uh, um, we should not uh, allow protonation of theta molecule uh, for molecule that formation. But uh, the problems are uh, more when we have, when we use purex solvents, uh, because it, uh, uh, it has a lot of limitations, because purex solvents, when we add like TVP, so it also extracts un unwanted metal ions. Therefore, we need to give a lot of scrubbing stages as well as we need to employ some complexing agents for recovering uh, this unemployed solvent metals during the extraction. So instead of that, why we cannot add the Truex solvent itself? So Truex solvents as phase modifiers, one can envisage. And in this case, what we need to understand is that 
electrolyte solvents, whatever we propose, it should have a very uh, long, uh, very uh, the fat phase formation limits should be much, much higher as compared to total molecule. Then only we can add in this system. For instance, add in this, this kind of molecule, which I am DOHYA, which I am shown here, this is a, uh, acetohydroxamic, uh, um, this molecule, uh, dioctyl hydroxy acetamides, so which is regarded as uh, one of the best reagents uh, for uh, so which are, uh, for uh, minimizing the fat phase formation. Look, this is because of the presence of this OH group. This OH group is always uh, intramolecularly um, uh, hydrogen bonded with this uh, with three carbonyl carbon such that uh, uh, the extraction of uh, uh, nitric acid. Uh, uh, in organic phase is very, very small. So once very, very see that is the extraction of nitric acid I am showing in this plot, the bottommost curve, uh, which I am showing now, is to point to my extraction of nitric acid in the of nitric acid module. This is extremely small amount of nitric acid is extracted into organic phase. Whereas in the case of uh, Todga, uh, yeah, it is extracting more. When we combine this uh, uh, Todga molecule, as well as which way the amount of nitric acid extracted into organic phase is quite high. And one can expect that because of the uh, higher extraction of nitric acid, it is going to form that phase much early. But we found that it was not so. This is because of the interaction which is happening between uh, this alkyl group which is attached to this hydroxyacetamide with endodecline and minimizing uh, irrigation, which I am going to show it in the next slide. And, uh, and he can see that what are the advantages of using this truvex as phase modifiers. One can see a bottom part of the bottom part of the plot. Uh, one can see that uh, Tega is a line which one can see is not very clear uh, in this plot. The red line it can sustain up to the loading of uh, one uh, gram per liter of uh, neodymium. And uh, whereas when we uh, when we have DHOA molecule, DHOA molecule, uh, DOHOA molecule also extracts. Uh, uh, this uh, magnesium uh, and uh, trivalent metals. Therefore, you can see the black line. Black line is extracting. When we combine these two uh, ligands, that is DOHYA as well as TODGA, we can see that synergistic extraction is happening. So, despite the synergistic extraction as well as uh, uh, the extraction of nitric acid more in the combined system, but what we find is that uh, uh, the the Aggregate size, which is formed in the combined uh, in the combined system, is very small. This is because of the very small size of uh, DOHYA uh, exhibited uh, upon extraction. One can see that on the right side of the plot, uh, this uh, third gamma molecule, third gamma molecule uh, up to four molar, it has uh, the aggregate size, which is displayed there, and. Uh, one can see that DOHYA, which is having a very, very small in size as compared to DO, uh, Todga molecule. And upon combining these two molecules together, we found that uh, the aggregate size, which is formed, uh, is very, very small. As a result, uh, we are finding that there is no third phase formation and uh, the, um, the, the, the as well as uh, the limiting aggregate size formed in the combined solvent system is also very, very small. Now, I am going to tell about how the structural modification is effective in uh, uh, minimizing the third phase formation. So, what we have understood is that uh, the alkyl group which is attached to this, uh, um, this uh, dihydrocolamide is going to have a strong bearing on third phase formation as well as aggregate formation. So, we can see that this aggregate size uh, uh, is a strong function of alkyl group. Very long alkyl chain length uh, is going to minimize the third phase formation and very short uh, alkyl group is going to increase the extraction. So, therefore, by combining a long alkyl chain length uh, and uh, a small alkyl group on the other side and make the unsymmetrical dichloroamide, so we are going to solve both the, uh, we are going to uh, uh, solve the problems associated with the dichloroamide uh, 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 with respect to that phase formation. At the same time, we also uh, increase the distribution ratio by having a smaller alkyl chain length. So, because of this, uh, we prepared a large number of uh, diglycolamides by mixing C8 on the one side and varied C6, C8, C10, C12 on the other side. 
and we found that ca12 compounds whenever uh, c12 is there it was minimizing the third phase formation or it is preventing the third phase formation therefore in the second lot what we have done is c12 we have fixed on one side and varied c4 c6 c8 c10 on the other side we found that uh, our uh, c12 is good enough for preventing the third phase formation and c4 is good enough for uh, carrying out uh, 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 for showing very high distribution ratio and uh, and because of the presence of this alkyl chain length, uh, it was preventing the third phase formation. The aggregate size which is formed in the case of alkyl group uh, when it is more than 10 are very, very small. Even though the extraction of nitric acid in all the systems are quite similar. So, one can see at the bottom plot uh, the nitric acid extraction isotherm uh, in which uh, we have varied uh, um, this. This is symmetrical uh, diglycolamide. So, C6, C8, C10, C12. All these things we have varied and we found that C6 forms early third phase as well as C8 forms as usual at 4 molar nitric acid, 5 molar nitric acid, it forms third phase. Whereas in the case of C10 and C12 molecules, it doesn't give rise to any third phase formation. So we can see this is because of the fact that uh, the interaction between this alkyl group which is attached to the diglycolamide with endodecane, it is more in the case of C10 and C12 molecules. Therefore, the aggregate size which is formed uh, in the case of C10 and C12 are very, very small as compared to the critical aggregate size required for that phase formation. So with this uh, uh, in, in mind, so what we have done is we have synthesized uh, uh, the unsymmetrical diglycolamide with the C8 on one side and C12 on the other side and we carried out the mixed settler studies and demonstrated the minor uh, modifier free minor actinide partitioning so in which uh, there was no modifier present in the organic phase the flow sheet which is obtained was very simple and we found that uh, uh, higher lanthanides more than neodymium uh, it requires uh, less than uh, five stages for complete extraction americium it requires less than nine stages for complete extraction and then lower lanthanides require uh, 15 stages for complete extraction whereas uh, By using uh, this unsymmetrical diglycolamide is very simple because it doesn't uh, extract unwanted metal ions and uh, because it is uh, modifier free. Because of this, uh, this is a superior solvent uh, for minor actinate partitioning application. In addition to this, we have also synthesized a uh, uh, new variant as I have discussed earlier. Uh, di, um, di, uh, octyl hydroxyacetamides and we found We found that uh, this, in the case of, uh, mm, in the case of uh, uh, this hydroxyacetamides, uh, they have advantages because uh, of uh, this hydrogen bonding, intramolecular hydrogen bonding, as I have discussed earlier. And because of this, the amount of nitric acid which is extracted into organic phase is very, very small. At the same time, because of the presence of this alkyl group, uh, which is attached to this hydroxyacetamide is quite uh, sufficient for uh, exhibiting very good interaction with endodecane and uh, for preventing the third phase formation. One can see that the amount of nitric acid which is extracted uh, uh, into the organic phase uh, as well as uh, the distribution ratio exhibited uh, at uh, even at uh, two molar nitric acid is very small. So this indicates that by using this hydroxyacetamide even at two molar nitric acid we can strip, uh, uh, we can recover the extracted lanthanides and actinides from the organic phase. Next slide. I want to go to this one. We don't want this one. Yeah. So based on this, uh, uh, we have also carried out the mixed settler uh, studies and showed that uh, this uh, DOHYA molecule is uh, uh, much better uh, in the sense uh, as compared to what is available uh, literature reported values in the case of uh, TODGA and TBP as well as uh, DMDO HEMA kind of molecules. And so far, what we have seen is the two cycle approach in which uh, uh, the lanthanides and actinides are extracted as a group 
together and stripped back. Uh, later on, it is also uh, necessary to do lanthanide actinide separation uh, from the product which is obtained after minor actinide partitioning. This is known as two cycle approach. Instead of this, we can also invoke uh, the strategy of uh, uh, having a single cycle separation in which, uh, uh, in which uh, uh, this is similar to ice annex process in which we, it is necessary to use aqueous soluble BTPs uh, for uh, selectively stripping actinides alone from the organic phase. So in this case, we have used uh, this modifier-free uh, ligands. Modifier-free ligands are nothing but uh, DQPODGA, wherein one side is having C8, another side is C12, as well as we also used uh, DOHYA, that is known as dioctyl hydroxyacetamides uh, for extraction, uh, single cycle separations. One can see that uh, uh, this, uh, um, whenever we use uh, the DQBODGA as well as uh, tetra decal uh, that is C10, C10 on both the sides, the separation factors, the single cycle separation factors which is achieved uh, over europium and americium are quite significant. Uh, we are getting uh, the separation factor of the order of more than four 400 uh, uh, in the case of these two ligands. Therefore, so we suggest that uh, uh, this uh, uh, unsymmetrical diglycolamide as well as uh, the symmetrical diglycolamide with C8 on both the sides or sorry C10 on both the sides and uh, C12 on both the sides are very good for preventing the third phase formation during minor actinide partitioning. So with this I wanted to conclude that when diglycolamides are used that is in the case of Todka and Tedga the literature says that we can use DGA molecule with TBP as a phase modifier. It has a, a lot of advantages, easy to synthesize, commercially available. This molecule, Stodga and Tedga, prevents the third phase formation because of the addition of TBP. And uh, TBP is much superior to DOHYA, that is what our study indicates. But it offers limitations such as uh, it extracts, uh, because of the presence of TBP, it extracts uh, molybdenum, zirconium, palladium, ruthenium, iron, etc. And this is a phosphorus-based ligand. This is uh, having a limitation. And uh, definitely, because of the co-extraction of unwanted metal ions, it requires a large number of stages of scrubbing. At the same time, we also it is also necessary to add uh, the complexing agent for scrubbing, which causes a lot of uh, problems, uh, gener which which causes the generation of secondary waste, uh, which should have been prevented. And uh, because of the presence of significant amount of uh, TBP, it also extracts significant amount of nitric acid. So stripping was quite difficult. Uh, the number of stages required for stripping was more. So this is, the, uh, and the second case is uh, DGA, diglycolamide, in the case of Todga and Tedga, when it is combined with uh, DOHYA. So it is, of course, offering advantages of CHON, and uh, it prevents that, no doubt, it prevents the third phase formation. But it also extracts the unwanted metal ions, and the uh, scrubbing required is more, and uh, then uh, stripping stages are more. In the case of unsymmetrical diglycolamides, when we use, it offers more advantages, uh, that is CHYN, and easy to synthesize, it prevents the third phase formation, and the, the exciting advantage is the modifier-free extraction. One can load, so to the extent of maximum loading we can achieve and poor extraction of unwanted metal and that is also another advantages and uh, we have seen that there are no major disadvantages of that zirconium is extraction is happening but it can be controlled by the addition of coidta uh, molybdenum and ruthenium irrespective of whatever you use diglycolamides it always happens and uh, one thing you should understand that uh, this is not a single cycle method it extracts all the metal ions uh, and uh, strip back all the metal uh, that is uh, both lanthanides and group extraction occurs and group extraction group back extraction occurs when we use uh, in the absence of this btp on the other hand when we use btp as the molecule for stripping uh, actinides alone from the organic phase then in a single cycle process that is similar to ice annex we can separate actinides alone directly from the high level liquid waste with a separation factor more than 200 in this kind of process. Then we use modifier free extractants such as uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, unsymmetrical diglycolamides and symmetrical diglycolamides with C10, C10 on both the sides and C12, C12 on both the sides. With this, I would like to acknowledge my thanks.
uh, Dr. Anantha Sivan, he is our group director. He is uh, pushing all our uh, programs uh, uh, to the pro uh, projects to the completion. And uh, Dr. Uh, P. Velavendan, uh, he is uh, the material, our uh, um, material development uh, section. He is uh, developing me methods and materials for reprocessing program. And uh, Rajiv, uh, he is responsible for uh, uh, the engineering skill developments, mixed settler studies, as well as uh, um, the uh, centrifugal extractors, development of engineering skill studies, process development, as well as equipment development. And uh, Dr. N. Desigan is responsible for minor actinic studies section. And uh, uh, this is the group which I have worked with. And uh, Dr. Sunish, he has done uh, lanthanide actinide separations. Dr. Prativa, uh, she was responsible for this unsymmetrical diglycolamides as well as uh, this uh, DOHYA. Um, and uh, Jammu Ravi, all of you might be knowing. So he, he has done a lot of work on unsymmetrical diglycolamides. Dr. P.K. Nayak, he has done extensive studies on uh, this uh, mixture settler as well as uh, separations associated with symmetrical diglycolamides. And Robert Selvan and uh, Amuda Subha helped me in all the activities. And Dr. Kumarajan, he is responsible for all the minor actinide uh, program, which I have shown here. And these are uh, the JRFs. And uh, essentially, I have used uh, the studies carried out uh, by uh, Ramaswamy, Parvati, and Jismon uh, for this presentation. I thank all of them. And Venkatesh Rao and Amesh, they are also JRF working with me. And uh, thank you for uh, your listening. And if you have any questions, uh, I am uh, ready to give you answer. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pankaday. Yes. The session is open for discussion. Any questions? So there are nobody's and there are two questions that uh, came from audience. I will read up yes. one minute. Okay. So yes. the, first question, the first question is internationally, Dodaka is still preferred candidate. How about the radiolytic degradation of large chain length? Uh, we have, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have studied uh, uh, the radiolytic degradation of uh, the alkyl chain length, long alkyl chain length, uh, and uh, we have seen that we have always compare uh, uh, our uh, studies with uh, Todga and Tedga because uh, uh, they have been suggested as the best molecule for minor secondary partitioning. Our studies have indicated that uh, the radiolytic and degradation behavior the retention behavior is comparable to that of uh, uh, this dilycolamides uh, that is stored on data. So, so uh, uh, in fact, uh, what we have seen is that uh, they are all inacus uh, degradation products. Uh, similar to Todga and Tedga, uh, uh, the advantage of using uh, amides uh, for extraction is that the degradation products most often uh, it results in uh, uh, the formation of inacus degradation products. Therefore, uh, this uh, as well as uh, this amides, all these things results only in the inacus degradation products which will not retain that it was not retaining uh, this americium in the organic phase upon degradation that is what our uh, conclusion okay. second question is somebody has written that the maximum volatility of nitric acid available in the market is 16 molar how do you find yeah. these two products that are showing molarity above 16 please explain no no, no, we have, we, have, we, have, we have carried out up to 16 molar only. This is scale, uh, this scale, no, I can put up to 20 also. Okay. okay. I can put 20 also, but the data indicates up to up to concentrated nitric acid. You have to see yeah. that. You have, you have not, uh, the specimen okay. has okay. not seen that. Okay. So the third question is, what is the role of sodium nitrate at given acidity in micelle formation or pet waste formation? Uh, you, you repeat the question. What is the role of sodium uh, nitrate in NO3 at given acidity in micelle formation or air phase formation? Sodium nitrate? Yeah. This is the question. So, no, sodium nitrate, uh, see, sodium nitrate, uh, see, this is the organic phase micelles. If uh, sodium is extracted into organic phase, then only it is going to form. Okay. 
and uh, we know that uh, sodium is not going to be extracted into the organic phase by this reagents so it will not have any bearing on sodium nitrate extraction and on micellar oh. formation okay that's the other question why the size is decreasing with increasing alkyl chain for symmetrical BGA, megalopolymer? Why the size is decreasing? The size is decreasing, increasing uh -huh. alkyl chain for symmetrical BGA. Yes. Yeah, that is that is that is the that is the beauty of our uh, uh, work. No, innovative work. Uh, what uh, we have understood is that uh, uh, this when you have longer alkyl chain, so it allows the interaction between the alkyl uh, diglycol amide and the n-totecane. Because of this interaction, that is known as Van der Waals kind of interaction is happening between the uh, diglycol amide with the longer alkyl chain length. With the endotecane. Because of that, uh, the perfectly forces are more in those cases. C10 and C12, you find the dispersion forces are more. Because of that, the uh, undergoes uh, dispersion and the sizes which have been obtained are smaller and the Okay, another question. Why when it comes to third phase formation, there are yeah. many factors. One is the acid uptake. That is very important. Yeah. Okay. Second is the nature yes. of pieces formed in the organic phase. Nature of? Nature of pieces formed in the organic phase. Yes, yes. Sure, sure. Okay. sure. Okay. Then for third one is the hypophysicity of the organic liquid. Yes. Hypophysicity. So, now yes. this will be important factor. All the three play an important role, right? All the, the three play an important role. Yes. Acid update. Factors are uh, playing a role. To my knowledge, uh, uh, all these factors do play an important role in deciding uh, the third phase formation. Uh, see, this uh, one is to five, one is to two complex, and all uh, it is applicable at tracer levels. No doubt, uh, it is beyond any doubt uh, the nature of form uh, species which is formed in the reverse micellars are quite different uh, from uh, what we determine. It is a gross phenomenon which we determine uh, than one is to two complex, uh, one is to one complex at trace levels. Uh. So uh, when we increase the concentration, we have seen uh, we have seen third guy is forming one is to one complex also. Yeah, yeah. This third gun and third gun, we can form one is to one complex also, provided we increase the concentration of modifier in the organic phase. Yes. So, all these, uh, see, to my knowledge, all these things do determine uh, the limits of that phase formation. Okay. Uh, so, we need to study all this. That is what I can say. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Nagaraisa. Thank you very much. And the development of organization. I would like to thank you for your excellent lecture. Thank you, Dr. Ramadan. Thank you. Thank you. So we, we move on to the next speaker today. Ready, no? Thumbs up. Okay. Thumbs up. So the next speaker is Dr. Pinesh Dami. Uh, he is from uh, Control, the Process Control and Recon Recon Master Lab, FRT BART. That person is a superintendent in the plutonium plant. He teaches the chemistry from Mumbai University. His area of research are process and analytical development studies of relevance to fuel reprocessing and waste management. He is involved in radiochemical separation of several useful radionuclides from radioactive waste stream, employing separation techniques like 
carbon dioxide, ion exchange, extract and chromatography, ready chemical precipitation, and liquid membrane. It has more than 120 degrees of in various international channels and more than 200 papers in natural symposia. He is an assistant of scientific and technical experiment award in the Department of Atomic Energy in 2007. So with the introduction, I would like to invite Dr. Dami to give his lecture, United Talk on separation of Q strontium 90 from Kachan LW and production of clinical grade lithium 90 acetate for therapeutic application. Dr. Dami, please. Thank you, Dr. Karim, for kind introduction. I will be presenting on separation of pure strontium 90 from high limited dose for production of clinical grade with the 90 state for therapeutic applications. For this presentation, in my outline is be like this strontium element at its rules, why we would not want to recover strontium 90. Right. Then, constraints of high level liquid waste for the radio chemical composition, suppression of strontium 90 using solvent experiment before 2015, because a lot of solvent has been used for separation of strontium. Actual solvent being crown ether that was not available. So, we have utilized a secondary stream for the separation of strontium 90 using other solvents. Then, using those schemes, how the development process has been changed for the management of high degree waste. And then how we have done the bulk separation, then fine purification, and ultimately development of Sonsier 90 ATM 90 generator system for the regular supply of lithium 92 uh, radio medicine center uh, parade for cancer therapy. And what is the present status of this? Right. Now, when you talk about the strontium, natural strontium, it has the it has several isotopes. You can see here strontium 85, 86, 87, 88, with a different abundance 0.56 percent, uh, maximum being 88, which is 82 percent. When it uh, when we irritate this natural strontium. We will not get strontium 90. There is what I want to show you here. The neutron capture processions are very, 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 very small. Are very, very small. And at the same time, when you want YFTM 90 by irrigating YFTM oxide, naturally available, there also it will not be possible because net, uh, neutron capture processing value for uh, YFTM uh, 89 is 1.28 is also very, very small. So, then now radio strontium, when we talk, it is 90 strontium and 85 plus 89 strontium. This 89, 90 strontium, which is available because of the fission of uh, fissile element in the reactor, with the half life is 28 years, with a good uh, yield above 6 percent, beta energy 0.55 MeV. And you can see here the beta decay scheme of this uh, strontium 90. Finally, uh, uh, it's a daughter for ATM 90, and after beta decay, it gave to stable uh, zirconium 90. And ATM 90 has got the uh, energy 2.23 MeV. And when you talk about the neutron irradiated uh, natural strontium, we get it from the grid, and uh, it's, it's a mixture of 85 plus 89, and with a slightly longer half life. Now, what is the interest? Uh, why you want to separate this uh, high level uh, uh, from high level uh, strontium 90? Why you want to separate? You can see here there are a lot of uh, uses. It has medical use, controlled amount of even strontium 90, which is known to be talk for its toxicity, can be used for the treatment of bone cancer. Its daughter protein 90 is very important for therapeutic reducing uh, uh, It is used for the certain type of uh, cancer treatment. In this study also, it has got a lot of uh, applications. They have been used long back for the uh, thickness roses, uh, for paper, plastic, metals, etc. 
Township 90 also is significant, but it is cheaper than this uh, plutonium 238, uh, which has been used for many radioisotope thermoelectric uh, and thermomechanical power generators. And it has been also used in the SNAP sources. Uh, systems for remote and inner areas, remote weather stations uh, or aircrafts. From waste management point of view, also it is very really important because it is a heat generating radionuclide. If you can uh, see for cesium and stones, and now people are talking about the separation from the highly liquid waste uh, beside actinides. <coughs> now, how this? What is the source? What is the source of strontium 19? It is basically QX high level liquid waste, which is generated from the QX process. You can see here uh, spent fuel when it is subjected to QX process after choke leaching or degrading, it is dissolved. Then it is subjected to free feed clarification. Then the solvent uh, in this uh, feed preparation, then subjected to solvent assessment where uh, uranium and plutonium are extracted. And the refinate from that uh, stage is uh, subjected to evaporation after diluent wash, and then high end liquid waste is generated from there. This is the basically main source of uh, strontium 90, cesium 137, and a lot of high level liquid waste is used. Where is this source? So, this is the uh, source where home and toy with my top will be covering the. Now, what are the different elements present in this high level liquid waste? If you see here, it will have very little unrecovered uranium and plutonium and with the minor actinides, americium, bacterium, curium, etc. And bulk of fission product will contain uh, cesium-137, strontium-90, lithium-90, rubidium-106. And almost all the isotopes you can see here in the fission product, they are there for some of other use. Especially you may be knowing that cesium is very much useful for blend irradiator now presently being separated in the multicule. Uh, hundreds and thousands of QE scale. Strontium also, we have got a big plan. Yetim 90, that's what I'm presenting. Rudinium, not, you have not six yesterday, you have seen that Banerji has presented uh, about the I flag. And other than this, fission product, it has a high level liquid waste also contains corrosion products like iron, chromium, nickel, added salts, and a small amount of dissolved organic like TVP, DVP, etc. And beside the with four molar nitric acid concentration. A typical gamma spectrum, when you see, it's not a beta spectrum, it's a gamma spectrum. And you can see here, a lot of uh, elements there with fission product. And uh, inventory-wise, it, it is very, very rich source. You can see here, for a burn up of 6,600 megawatt days per ton fuel, after five years cooling, and uh, you can see strontium activity almost 130, uh, 1.32 into 10 is for 4. This was curie per ton of heavy element. That means very, very rich source and equal amount of YTM-90 achievable from there because YTM-90 is the daughter of Samsung 90. Now let us talk about the actual work where we started about the jobs. In the Tombe reprocessing plant, when you see, it is the first reprocessing plant where we have done the reprocessing by using previous process. And you can see the historical high level liquid waste stored was the composition. It was stored from years and it has got a lot of uranium, it has got plutonium, and then, but uh, beta gamma, because it's a long decay, now it is very small, 8 curie per liter. You can see other fission products uh, is very, very less in mini curie, or only major fission products are cesium 137 and strontium 90. So we can say that if cesium is separated from this, then strontium will become the, our, uh, means ideal feed. This will become the ideal feed for uh, separation of strontium 90. We don't have to go to present the high-level liquid waste where those will be known and other radioactive fission products also will be there. And present high-level liquid waste, you can see here a lot of other fission products. Other difference is the present high-level liquid waste, it has got salt free, almost very, very less, less amount of salt you will see the present high-level liquid waste. Whereas earlier, almost 250 to 300 gram per kilogram of salt contained in there because of a lot of sodium, iron, aluminum, calcium, so many elements are there in that. And beside that, sulfate, iron, etc. Because earlier, some sulfamate was used as a partition agent. So, this is basically uh, compositional differences comes because of that. See, now beta spectrum, you can see strontium and lithium 90. When you see this, is the typical spectrum of uh, equilibrium mixture, and this is the typical spectrum of strontium 90, and typical spectrum of lithium 90. After separation, we have done it. 
Now, from this highly liquid waste, how we have done this separation and purification? Because to separate ATM 90, we first require the strontium 90 in the purest state because purity of ATM 90 for human application is very, very important, which I will talk later. 10 is power minus uh, 6 curie per curie of uh, ATM 90 for uh, strontium and 10, 10 is power minus 9 curie per curie of. Uh, uh, alpha, I mean, per curie of ATM 90 for alpha. These stringent uh, purity requirements are there. So, for that, the separation of stone cell 19 pure state is very, very important. So, let us see how we have done this. Now, after a lot of solvents, because as I told you, the selective solvents for uh, stone cell are well known from long back, but they were not available in small, even milligram, they were gram, they were, they were not available. So, we have not concentrated our study on that. So other solvent, because actinide partition is one of the major now uh, program is going on, uh, even throughout the world also it was going on, but uh, at least in our country now it is a big program, wherein the active components are being separated and the inactive components are being separated from the dead and active components are concentrated and then uh, they will be rectified uh, like that. So the volume reduction factor will be there. So in the beginning, 30% TVP and 0.2 mole drug solvent. This process was developed somewhere in 1995, 90, and though it was developed in the Harvard's 1985 to 89. But in India, we could achieve some success on this somewhere around uh, 1995. So, highly liquid waste was contacted with 30% TVP to deplete uranium and plutonium. Otherwise, a lot of uranium is there that cannot be put uh, the uh, partitioning and uh, uh, victimization process. So, in the first step, uranium and plutonium were recovered within 30% TBP and it again. Subsequent to this step, uh, in the second step, 2x solvent was used to deplete on entire alpha activity from the uh, raffinate so that it becomes non alpha. That was the concern originally. That raffinate somehow we had the opportunity to get that raffinate after the applied partitioning. So we, what we did that time, EMP was uh, one of the uh, granulated EMP was made, and that was used for separation of cesium-137 uh, from actinide lanthanide depleted uh, highland liquid waste. Then the rep in the effluent from that steam, which was the pure stone cm 90 more or less, was used subjected to radiochemical precipitation, and then generation of ATM-90. You can see here, laboratory scale, at, we started at 2 mg level, and you can see purity level was 0.14. So some, some other impurities like uh, traces of cesium, ruthenium. As I told you, stone 790 purity is very, very important with respect to alpha as well as other uh, elements also. Now coming to the next level, next high level, we started up to 30 mg level. You could go at the same scheme. You can see purity level improvement. Further again, it was scaled up to 50 mg level. And then you can see still better. But still, you can see some uh, cesium was detected, which uh, we thought, yes, cesium tackling is not that uh, difficult task, so it can be tackled later. Now, based on that, a closed scheme was uh, proposed, which I will not discuss much here. But later, it was not using uh, plant scale, it was only in laboratory testing only. Now, at the same time, a lot of uh, 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 other studies, other plant partitioning reagents were uh, coming into picture, like Tedga, Tolga. Is dichloral amides and they are our, our being proposed. So then simultaneously, that uh, two uh, uh, strontium selective reagents also developed. They were available at least. We can say that uh, at our level team we could get it a uh, very very small level from chemical engineering division, and then some we could procure from imported uh, chemical also. So those things also we started using Tedga also uh, after the CMPO. We proposed a process wherein Purex high level liquid waste was subjected to Tedga based extraction, wherein 0.2 mole Tedga was used, and after partitioning, this actinide lanthanide uh, depleted aqueous phase was subjected to again Tedga only using a slightly different composition of the diluent, high percent IDA and that again. Then quantitative extraction of stone was achieved, and then we could steep and get the uh, some purified stone gem 90. This we thought that in Tarapur in ASDF will be adopting this process, then we'll have a very good stream for uh, generation of ATM 90. But somehow that uh, Stone 90 was not uh, recovered in Tarapur. 
So simultaneously, that from where the processing plant, a three-step process was developed using the combination of these things. So three-cycle process. In the first cycle, uh, uranium and plutonium we are depleted using 30% TBP. In the second cycle for cesium requirement, Venice crown was used for cesium recovery. Then we have glass pit, which five glass fences were made, and they are being supplied. In third cycle, this uh, Kedga based extraction was carried out 0.4 molar and I, I, IDA and endodegain. The actinide, lanthanide, and strontium all together they were extracted because the basic aim was that time to make it uh, the volume reduction factor. So the reference from this was almost uh, uh, low level liquid waste and which could be disposed directly or will be uh, uh, stored for some time and will be uh, dispersed later. So third cycle product which contains major amount of strontium and small amount of uh, actinide lanthanides. This team we found is very, very ideal for strontium purification because as I told you, no ruthenium, no zirconium, ninium, no cerium is long, cooled, uh, long uh, stored uh, high level liquid waste. So this team was now uh, chosen for uh, strontium recovery. Now typical composition of that uh, strict and concentrated product, you can see here uh, strontium concentration 9.5 curie per liter. And other uh, other elements, so many elements are there from the because concentration it was done and some poison profits and all elements were there. From this, so we have done the first step again to because small amount of cesium is there, how to degrade that stone cesium. We have degraded by again using granulated AMP column. So quantitatively cesium was degraded from that uh, solution. Then Traces of uranium, plutonium, and minor actinides were there because the actinide contained not much in this uh, in this uh, high level liquid waste system. So, pure solvent again because it is known for not extracting strontium 90. CMPO is not. They, uh, unlike in Tedga and Torga, that has got you have to control strontium extraction by IDA concentration. So, CMPO alone was chosen. And then in the extraction from the be mode, it was very much simpler to adopt to partition all that night from there. Then later, the referent from this theme, which we will say cesium and other actinide depleted phase, was used for strontium uh, purification using further purification. Now, you see uh, that steam after doing that, you can see strontium concentration, we could, after concentration, we could get up to 40 to 50 curie per liter. But that when we have used for a 10 and generation, you will see that 10 raised power minus 4 to 10 raised power minus 5 curie per curie of strontium 90, this much activity was achieved in this, which was not enough for um, a 10 and generation. So, subsequently, the radiochemical purification of this was carried out, wherein the iron was used as an alpha scavenger for alpha activities, at, and then followed by a carbonate precipitation. You can see that some losses were there, strontium. But uh, you can see that the alpha level was could be reduced to 10 raised to the power minus 8 curie per curie of strontium 19. But which was still not uh, enough for uh, uh, generating lithium 19 because in the subsequent step, which I will show you later, the generator system is unable to uh, uh, reduce the alpha activity. So we would like to uh, recover here strontium at the purest state as, as, as per the requirement. Then we proposed that the, you know ultra purification was carried out in the membrane based supported liquid membrane based using KSM 17, which is used for strontium lithium generators, which I will explain. Here itself, we could achieve the uh, after changing the event two times, we see this uh, receiver phase twice, we could achieve this to the uh, alpha activity level 10 is for minus 9 curie per curie of uh, lithium 90 level which was very, very uh, needs a requir uh, requirement for the clinical application. Otherwise, this has not been taken up for the any radiofinable applications. Because this, because of this, only the, this uh, critical criteria was very, very important step. Now, once we get this method now, we could generate a lot of activity, a uh, few hundred uh, ML level, uh, a small, small lot that we collected. Now we have generated the uh, strontium 90 feet, which we allow to uh, go to equilibrium. Now I will talk about the strontium from that strontium 90, how we have generated the 90 using supported liquid membrane generator. 
when we started initially, we thought that the column generator will be ideal as you know, and we know that technician also people are preferring the uh, uh, column uh, generator. So here the, we thought uh, extraction problem that we using KSM 17 loaded in X80 column will be ideal for loading FTM 90 from a small uh, low acid bearing solution and strontium will come out. But when you do this, then you'll have to wash strontium 90 completely from the column. It will be very difficult to wash and a lot of volume will require. And this effluent, when it comes and again, you have to recycle it, make views for next generation, it will get diluted. So, and the high specific activity requirement is one of the also prime criteria for uh, using this uh, uh, radio pharmaceutical uh, application uh, uh, for any radio nuclide. So, this column may, may material could be used to generate. Uh, up to 5 millimeter level, but later on it was uh, suspended because it was not continued. But a uh, good study was carried out, it was published in 1995. So that means this work is not very, very uh, new. Later on, a lot of solvent acid data was collected using KSM 17 and uh, that uh, CFDO already uh, was there. And basically, for a membrane based, photolipid membrane based technique, solvent acid data are the basic data. Where well, whether we can do uh, separation or not, what will be our better uh, stipend, and uh, at what uh, concentration it will be extracted, what concentration it is taken, all data were generated. You can see strontium 90 using KSM 17 is very, very negligible distribution ratio, whereas FTM 90 it is in hundreds at a particular condition. So you can see that very high separation factor is there, and that means from higher nitric acid concentration, you will, you will be able to uh, stiff it because that is the solid acid data for CM2, which is well known. So, we using all these data, later we started working on this uh, uh, development of the generator. So, initially, a single state, single state means in the equivalent mixture of FTM90 and Stone M90, we put in the feed compartment and KSM17 based membrane was used in the, uh, the membrane phase. And uh, uh, receiver phase, we could put uh, some core volume nitric acid. So we could get, get put uh, means transport of uh, FTM 90 within some four, four hour. But uh, then question were arising, by suppose some there is some storm because I, as I told you, uh, the alpha, other than the alpha activity, stonium 90 also is equally toxic uh, for human application. So to uh, there will be there were always doubt. There cannot be zero extraction of uh, stone cell 90 through KSM 17. By chance, it uh, gets a rupture, or by chance, some extraction takes place. This also will accompany your product. So, this should not be pushed for the radio pharmaceutical application. Then again, you can see here, uh, but otherwise, it was possible to get 95% activity within uh, some four hours. But at the same time, you can see that four more nitric acid again using for radio pharmaceutical application that also was not suggested. Then we have worked very closely with close association with the radio pharmaceutical people. Uh, Dr. Meera Bagdes, uh, thank to Meera Bagdes who supported that time and she was continuously uh, you know, uh, keeping watch on this uh, generator. And you can see here, then we could generate second to, then we suggested that second stage should be put for two medicine. Whatever that hormonal nitric acid containing FTM 90 is there, why not to pass through the CMPO based problem? If any alpha activity, if any stone cell is there, that always not going to be. And at the same time, that receiving phase, one molar acetic acid was proposed, which is very good for radio pharmaceutical application later. So, based on this, we have generated this two state generator. So, that first cycle, first uh, one single state generator was later on discarded. So it was used up to 15, 15 minutes for basic study that they could do this study. But then for final application, two states for supported nuclear liquid membrane was only uh, proposed. So here you can see we have adopted in two, two modes. One is in the sequen uh, simultaneous mode, one is in the sequential mode. In simultaneous mode, we have used two uh, membranes simultaneously. In the first uh, feed compartment, we have used the stone cell 90 FTM 90 mixture, and in the middle compartment, four molar nitric acid as the single stage generator. And from this selective uh, permeation of FTM 90 took to place in four molar nitric acid, where from the second stage, this uh, one molar acetic acid when we have taken in the final product stage. The FTM 90 alone was transported. If any stone cell is there, that will be left over in the. So, this will act as a check, uh, check uh, membrane 
So then we can ensure that the activity level in the of function 1918 19 uh, that it will not be there. Alternately, we have used two membranes, thinking that in four hours, anyway, this took also eight hours, but here, four hours, four hours, we have split it in these two. So, first stage we continued, and in the second stage, the separate membrane was to use because uh, within four hours, you keep your, after milking this uh, staunch energy, you can put back your feed back to the reservoir component so that your activity at, uh, in the dose rate also be minimized. So this was more preferred. So friendly, uh, we started with this 40 milligree per lot generator, and this was done in 2017 onwards. Now you can see later on, it, we went on working on it and to generate more and more purified stones of 90, because we have a lot of draw, uh, a drawback here also, we have no dedicated facility with the existing promote in the existing laboratory. We are preparing such a type of experiment also with a lot of constraints. So you can see here a TQD per liter solution. We can uh, we had uh, used a two stage generator and with more than 90 percent yield, we have generated almost 40 QD per liter solution in 90 days moving, which was very very ideal. And they have been, they have used now for the uh, regular uh, application. And now uh, and they wanted more specific activity. We are attempting on that. Now beta spectrum of that uh, separated YTM 90 you can see in this particular slide. And uh, how to do purity check? Again, that is the most important. Purity check is the only important. So after complete decay, you see here, practically uh, background level only we get. This is one check. But half-life of this isotope, every lot we check, uh, we separate, we are checking the half-life of the radio, uh, the uh, 90. We are confirming that, yes, the radio book purity is also OK. Then at the same time, this is the, with the help of MRI Pille long back in 2008, I visited uh, uh, Vienna that time uh, in some CRP program on this only. So with, during that period, a extraction chromatographic method was developed for real time quality control assay of AFTM 90. That means uh, if any stonesium is there in that, that can be identified with this, with that purity. So this method will be followed later on and regularly we are carrying out this. So with this, I can say that alpha activity of the permissible level, that means alpha less than minus 10 to the power minus 9 to the per curie of the 90 and strontium less than 10 to the power minus 6 to the per curie of the 90 we are able to generate. Then we started regular production of uh, uh, batches of the uh, FM 90 for regular permissible uh, supply. So initial six batches when we, we tried only for our quality control, uh, complete decay followed by alpha and uh, and you can see here for quality control analysis, we have done the, this is the theory per liter we could separate and at RSST in, uh, independently we asked them to check and at the same time our uh, RCD, radio chemistry engineer also, uh, it was checked uh, by Rahul Tripathi and you can see here in both, in both the cases you can see uh, less than the requirement, what is about the permissible level there, they certified this. Then once we know that our strontium 19 uh, material is free from alpha, means it has got very, very low activity of alpha. Now we are confident that this can be adopted for further studies. Then, then we were asked to find out the what are the elements load in this uh, product. So all the element whatever was possible we could do by ICPS. That is all done by after the entire complete decay of this uh, product solution and spiking the entire fiber by lot to the ICP. So because that is minimum requirement for ICP analysis. So you can see here whatever one molar nitric uh, acetic acid blank is, blank is showing, our entire batches are not showing any uh, significant uh, level of uh, contamination of these elements which are required by the, uh, the regular people as suggested by RMC in that time. So then the quality control data based on that uh, this material, uh, this, uh, this generator was uh, qualified by RPC, it was RPC clearance was taken and six uh, batch data were presented and thanks to Sarmila Benerji for uh, her important contribution and Arpit uh, um, uh, uh, Mitra, Mitraji uh, who was working in R RMC in that time and now he's in uh, Britain. So quality control data were made, sheet was made, and regularly using this sheet only now we are supplying uh, uh, almost one, 140 to 160 
and we about 140 mini mini brands regular supply we are doing this thing and uh, they have also they took also the rpc clearance for atmt dota tech uh, complex for uh, uh, neuro hindu uh, crime cancer therapy at rmc and so far i'm happy to announce that here more than 60 batches we have uh, supplied to rmc uh, one particularly per liter and uh, regular supply is still going on now because a lot of demand is coming from RMC, from TMC, from radio pharmaceutical also, of course, the pharmaceutical requirement is not much in there also we are supplying. But to meet the higher demand, now we have what we are doing, because uh, presently we can only supply some maximum uh, four to five batches or 140 minutes, not more than that. So to scale it up, now at WIP, uh, Dr. Kosik has now uh, good plan at WIP. They, of course, these are all working that together at NRG. Stonesium which solution from this, uh, whatever I was talking from the three cycle process, will be subjected to one more CGM uh, removal cycle using solvent assessor. Then again, it was followed by, it will be followed by CMPO cycle, where the entire alpha will be, uh, will be depleted in, at bulk. This stonesium product from that will be subjected to a glow box, a shielded glow box facility, wherein the hollow fiber membrane will be used for depletion of this alpha, if at all it is, it is there to the desired level. Before that, the AMP column also will be put so that any trace amount of oxygen is going there. So that also those will be also reduced. So bulk amount are almost 30, 40, uh, 40 liter scale of that much uh, high concentrated, uh, high activity solution is supposing once it is done, then it will be subjected to two radiochemical precipitation step and then bulk uh, preparation of this one. Once we prepare the bulk of the stone 790 solution in the purified form, then I think this uh, support a little membrane based multiple membrane. Right now we are only using 5 ml scale uh, supported little membrane cells. We have scaled up to 25 ml scale. So 5 generated of 25 means a lot of supply. So per year, almost 5,000 percent is the planning now as of today. So I hope this will be now uh, so shortly it will be starting. They uh, have uh, improvement fabrication stuff that's the beta and for some years continuously following this work and it is going ahead. So, with this, I'll conclude that high level OST is the good source for Stonesham 90 recovery and uh, the purification can be done even though uh, Stonesham 90 selective solvents are not there. If this is there, then again, the structure is made and changing also. But for making purpose, once it is done at uh, some few hundred uh, QE level, then I think uh, it will be long-lasting source. And from that, carrier free ATM-90 could be successfully required also. And this uh, two-stage supported environment with this technique can be multiplied and uh, then scaling up can be done. And uh, high specific activity, radio pharmaceutical uh, uh, application for that purpose, it can be supplied. And I acknowledge the colleagues from all FRD, it's not a one man job, this is a lot of radiation and those involved is there. So, a lot of people from FRD, WMD, RSST, RCD, uh, Radio Medicine Center, Parel, and uh, I really thank uh, head FRD, whoever head was there, they have never stopped working on this area, AD and RZ, Director and RZ, whoever was there, every time this work was supported. And as of today, I can say that four lot definitely we are giving. Of one particularly fifth law to this coming month or so again will be added and further scaling up will be carried out only after doing this uh, multi the line. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dani. Now, uh, Ms. Sunny is open for discussion. Any questions from the audience? No? So, tell me, sir, I have one question. The first thing on the CCM, separation of plants and on CCM. There is one. We are using the drone either to separate the CCM. Yes, okay. Another thing is separate now the PM from the trans chain. Then you're putting number in to separate two trans chain Yes. Right. So then you put the chemistry wise, uh, trans chain and lithium, one is fiber and another one is fiber. Yes. So you put precipitate in all the trans chain will be selected to put in red, no? But for recovery, you might have since no, but same time chain is going to be put in sulfate, it will be standard to put it over there. I proceed a lot, then you are telling that you can do it in this position. But sir, there will be solidity loss. Stone chain and pick up, I'm talking about what is speaking for the end of the day. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir
With this, we come to end of this session. We thanks our chairman, Professor S. Kannan, for conducting this session. Thank you, sir. We'll again meet at 1450 hour IST. Thank you.